Good evening, everybody. Gosh, it's, it's so nice to hear applause. You know, I'm a dean of students. I don't get applause. It's, it's, it's a tough job. But I can't complain. I, I've had a pretty good life. i uh, been, been really blessed. Grew up in a, in a real small town, like 2,000 people. And it, was a, it was a cool place to grow up. Grew up on a farm. Uh, you know, I, I had to walk, walk like a mile to the bus stop every day. It wasn't bad. Good exercise. And there was this one girl that was at the bus stop every day named Susie. She's a pain in the ass. You know, one of, one of those kids that no matter what you get, the next day she's got the same thing. You know, you know what I mean? You know, just make, just piss you off. Well, I get a new ball. Susie got a new ball. I get a new game. Susie got the, next, the same game the next day. And I went home one night and I said, Mama, isn't there something that I have that Susie can't have, doesn't have? My, my mom, I'm seven. Mom's trying to make me feel good, you know? That's what moms do. She said, well, David, there is something you have that she doesn't have. I said, what's that? She said, you look down between your legs that's called a penis. Susie doesn't have one of those because she's a girl. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. <laughs> so I go to bed, get up the next morning, walk on down that school bus, school bus stop, and I see Susie. And she's kind of got a little attitude, and I look over, I say, Susie, I want to show you something. Whip down my pants. I pull out that little pecker, and I said, this is called a penis. I got one, you don't have one. She kind of looks at me, doesn't say anything. We go to school, everything's good. Next morning I get up, I walk on down a school bus stop, feeling really good about myself. I see that little bitch, she's got a big old grin on her face. Big old grin on her face. And I go, all right, Susie, what you got? She looks at me, smiles, lifts up her skirt and says, David, my mama says I got one of these. I haven't had as many of those as I want. <laughs> Lesson learned, seven years old. True words never spoken. So I told you I grew up on a farm, and it was a big farm. Uh, you know, it had been called a ranch if we lived out west, but it was a farm. My dad had three bulls on the farm and a couple hundred cattle and cows, and, and I, I learned to understand the, the bulls. I knew how to speak, kind of could speak bovine. And one day there's a big ruckus going on at the farm, and I, I realized that the bulls are kind of pissed, and, and I hear what they're saying, and the big bull's like, I don't care, he ain't having any of my cows, and medium, medium-sized bull says, he ain't having any of my cows, and the little bull says, nah, he ain't having any of my cows either. So the big day arrives, and I realize that my dad had ordered a new bull, and they were pissed. They want to share their cows. I get that. I was seven, but I got it. <laughs> so the next day, my dad backs up that truck and puts the ramp down, and out walks the biggest, baddest bull you've ever seen. I mean, horns to the sky. Balls like basketballs, junk just dragging on the ground. I mean, this, this is a bull. And I look over, and that other big bull's over there, and he's kind of like, yeah, well, he can have any of my cows he wants, and the medium bulls, yeah, me too. And they look down, that little bull, he's snorting, he's sniffing, he's all kind of pissed off. And the big bull says to him, I say, boy, you ain't thinking of fighting him, are you? Little bull says, fight him, hell, I just want him to know I'm a bull. So finally, I leave the farm. I decide I'm going to serve my country. I enlist in the Army. My dad was in the Army. He, he was Army Airborne. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So I'm going to do what my dad did. I go to jump school. And I'm a little nervous because I was kind of afraid of heights. But I, I can get through it. So the night before the jump, I called my dad. I said, Dad, I'm ready to go. Tomorrow, first live jump. You got any advice? He said, son, you don't need advice from me. Trust your training. You're a well-trained soldier. Trust your training. So. I got home that night after the jump, called my dad, and he says, well, son, how'd it go? I said, dad, well, it, it was pretty cool. It was a big day, and you know, I was the last one, and the, the, the plane, the door opens, and the first guy goes, and all my buddies go, and I go r r just running ass, hauling ass to that door, and I got to that door, and I just froze. I put my arms up on, on the door, and I couldn't go. I was terrified. He goes, you serious? I said, dad, it was horrible. He said, well, what, ha what happened? I said, that drill sergeant came up behind me and carried that big baton. He said, son, you're either going to jump, I'm going to ram this right up your ass. And my dad said, well, did you jump? And I said, well, a little. <laughs> yeah, I think one of our trustees is here tonight. I hope she's all right with that. <laughs> so. So I got out of the army, and the first day out of the army, I'm feeling like a man, just on, you know, on top of the world. And I go out with a bunch of buddies, and we walk into this bar, and there's the most beautiful girl I've seen in my life. She's just absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. And I see her, and I just, I'm, I'm feeling good about myself, you know? Just got out of basic training, and I walk over to her. I look at her, and I say, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. I have to know your name. She looks at me, big smile on her face. Of course, I'm in uniform. She gave me the benefit of the doubt. 
She looks at me, a big smile on her face, and says, my name's Carmen. I said, wow, beautiful name. She said, well, I'm glad you like it. I named myself. I said, you named yourself? She said, I sure did. And she said, I named myself Carmen because I really like cars and I really like men. She looked at me and she says, what's your name? And I said, beer sex. <laughs> so I said, I've had a pretty good life. And after several years, many years, I decided it was time for me to give back. So I, I joined the Peace Corps. Did it, did it in my 50s. Just, I just got back. Last thing, last thing I did, got back. It was really cool. They sent us to a pretty tough place. Sent us to South America. We're in the Amazon and we were in some tough country. But I was with some, with some pretty, good, pretty good dudes, and we're trying to find this native tribe. We went so far and deep, these, these tribesmen had never seen a, a modern man before. And lo and behold, we, we encountered them, and they didn't know what to do with us. And so they started fighting with us and throwing spears at us, and we just surrendered. And we, they captured us, and they brought us back to the village. And it was a little bit intimidating, but we're thinking, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So they put us in cages. They raised the cages way, way up in the trees, and then they started doing this dancing, and they were doing this psychotropic drugs, and just boom, 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 music all night long. And I'm scared to death. I don't know what the hell we're gonna do to get out of there. So the next morning came, and they, they stopped all the noise, and they lowered down the cages. And they brought the first guy out. There's three of us brought the first guy out. And the chief looked at him, no more music, and he said, you have one of two choices, death or bunga bunga. Yeah, he goes, man, I don't want to die. I don't know what Bunga Bunga is, but give me Bunga Bunga. So they took that man, and they strapped him down on a tree over on the side, bent him over, and every man in the tribe just popped him in the butt. It was horrible, like the worst thing you can imagine. And I'm going, oh, my God, what's next? They brought the second guy out, and this was a man, about six foot six, 275 pounds. And the chief says, what is your choice, death or Bunga Bunga? So he, this, this man, he looks at that chief, he spits in his face. He says, I choose death. Chief looks at him and he says, so be it. Death by Bunga Bunga. Thank you, sir. Sorry.